All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Matt Moore with Sess Garage. Steve Corn. Steve. Steve Corn with Magic Stairs. And we have Chris here as well uh, from Magic Stairs and Magic Lift. Right? So today we're doing a Magic Lift. Uh, and we wanted to show you, like, if you bought one of these things, this is how it would come. In, in this is how it like arrives. It's three boxes. Generally, it'll be UPS, and they'll they'll drop it off at your home just like this. And so this could be a, like a mic level DIY system, not a mat level DIY system, probably. Uh, you know, if it's not very complicated, and we do have uh, really well done written instructions, mm -hmm. and we're about to finish up a video, so. It's, it's a, uh, I would call it maybe a level eight on a scale of one to 10. Gotcha, yeah, so I wouldn't be doing this myself. So what we're gonna do here today is we're going to show you um, how this is done, how, to, how it's installed in real time, live here on camera, and we're gonna follow Steve and Chris around and they're gonna climb in the attic. Uh, we've done a little bit of leg work ahead of schedule or ahead of the camera here and that we're um, you're kind of relocating the where the garage door goes and we're uh, choosing, I want it in a very specific spot. It would be easier to just pick a spot in the middle of the garage and go. Uh, but I wanted it in a very specific spot, so we're going to show you all that here today. So I'm going to have the, uh, Mike and Chris follow Steve and Chris around Chad. all day. Damn, what am I seeing Chad? I, I'm keeping looking at Chris. So Steve and Chad all day. Uh, actually, this shouldn't take all day, right? It should be. Uh, we'll, we'll try to limit it to, uh, <laughs> so we'll get done before we'll, dinner time. We'll, we'll see how long it goes. Um, but we're gonna install the lift in you know, roughly at the area here, uh, and they'll talk you through. And so I'm gonna have them follow you on camera, and you'll talk us through what needs to be talked through, and we'll figure out um, um, how long it takes, and we'll let you know all that stuff as we as you work through it. What's the cost of this thing? The uh, Magic Attic Lift retails for twenty nine ninety five. Okay. Um, shipping, depending on what part of the, of the country you're in, um, is probably and and this is twenty twenty two. You know, March, a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah. Who knows where yeah. we're going to go? Mean, you got three boxes that are pretty right. substantial in size. So, you know, you're a little over three grand to do it, and then depending on if you hire a contractor or not to do it. Correct. The beauty of, is, of this is we'll have this video and you'll have the, the Magic Lift video as well, um, where if you didn't want to do it yourself, you could just hire a contractor, say, hey, here's what I want done, and any, you know, competent, you need an electrician, and then some sort of handy level, you know, handyman type person who could cut drywall and correct and and we use a use a couple of wrenches and tools. So let's get started. We offer a wooden bottom door, which has a, a, a fire, a 20 minute fire rating. The wooden door is not as attractive. Um, probably 99% of what we send out is the metal bottom door. And we'll keep this work area clean while we're doing this, so I'm going to put this outside. So this is, uh, this is the hardware kit for assembling the basket. And this is the hardware kit for assembling the arms up top and, and the framework for the, the magic lift. Okay, Chad, the uh, arms are behind that. Well, that was easy enough. All right, here's the back side. So we're not going to completely tighten these at this time. We're going to get the basket fully assembled and we're going to go back and tighten. When we do tighten, we're not going to turn the screw, the face of the screw. All of our metal is powder coated and to avoid chipping the powder coat, we're just going to hold the screwdriver and then turn the nut from, from behind just to keep it nice and, and clean. So 
So there are four tech screws and there are four pre-drilled holes and your back brace goes up to the, the pre-drilled holes and you put the tech screws in. Don't over tighten. So now we're going to tighten these screws. So now we're going to take our assembled basket and put it on top of the bottom door. Uh, one thing first, uh, we are already set up for two by six trusses, but this is fully adjustable for a four inch floor system all the way up to a 16 inch floor system. If you look right here, there's, uh, there's marks for the the uh, level of the floor system you're installing this in. We send them out of the factory for a six inch system. So if we had two by fours, we'd simply push this in and bring it up to the four inch mark, all the way down to 16 inches. I'm just going to put these here so we don't lose them. So the opening for this basket, the required opening, is 49 and a quarter by 22 and a half. Most of our homes here in Florida are built with trusses at 24 inches on center. So that leaves you an opening of 22 and a half inches. So it's a wonderful way to utilize that space, that opening between the trusses without having to make uh, changes to your floor system up there that require an engineer. Um, so the 49 and a quarter, uh, when we went up top to see where this was actually going to mount in a nice little room Matt has, um, it put us very close to that garage door frame. So you can see we've moved that garage door frame over about 12 inches and that our uh, this front corner of this basket is actually going to uh, lay right about where the frame originally was when this is closed up. So that's what we were doing earlier is, is making room for the basket basically. So th this is something that you want to be certain of when you're up in the attic and you say, well, this is a great place. This is where I want my basket. You got to make certain that down below you have access as well. So we're up in the attic. I just have to show off uh, this 10 pound bass caught by Michelle Mormon and wow. Stephen Newman. That's, That's a pretty serious bass. <laughs> okay, so here's, here's the area that, that Matt wanted to designate to the magic attic lift. Um, the, bottom, the wall down below has cabinets that are gonna be put on there. So, Originally, our, our lift was going to go in, in this truss bay right here. There's a truss here, and so we were going to put our lift right here. Um, but because of the cabinets, we need to kind of move it forward this way. So we are now going to be uh, basically in this, in this truss bay. So what we did, we kind of figured out where it was going to be. We took some measurements off of the back wall and the wall downstairs, the garage door, and we determined that this, this is the area that we needed to work with up top. We need 49 and a quarter. And we uh, drilled a pilot hole just to see where the one corner was going to be. And that's when we realized we were right up against the garage door rail. So the rail got moved. So right now we're going to kind of lay out where we're going to cut. We're going to go ahead and take out this OSB and just hope that we don't have any wires or anything that needs to be moved, which if needed, we can, we can uh, get them to do that for us. So, so <clears throat> this is one of our upper arms, we call it. That's the, the frame mount for the, the upper part of the magic attic lift. As you can see, we have a little flange off the back. So when, we, when we're determining our 49 and a quarter, we have to make a room for the inch and a half off to this side. Now we have a little, uh, AC drain pan here that catches water yeah. and we don't want to um, be 
too tight up against this, but we have plenty of room here where we're at. This actually will be with inside the truss. Um, it, this arm will be inside the trusses, so we have to put a header down below. So we just have to have enough room to work around this. That pink stuff. Yeah, we're 22 and a half right there. We got nothing going down there. We got lucky. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to <clears throat> see if we can pull this out. This is nasty. I'm just going to, because it's matte place here, I'm going to just take a little extra time to get this nice. I don't know if our other guys would do this. <laughs> so this is our basket arm. Our, or our upper arm and as you can see this actually would fit out down in between the trusses so if we just mount this on top of the osb or the decking that's not strong enough we have to put a header below so we've cut some headers 22 and a half inches and what we're going to do is we can't really get in here because of the flooring to put screws in to hold this header in place so we've cut some blocks and we're going to shove these blocks back an inch and a half. We can check it with this block. And we're going to put some screws into this block and then we'll have a great mounting spot for our header which will go in and we'll screw it right into that block. So by blocking these and putting the headers in, now when we put our arms on there, it has a good solid uh, support underneath it. So when you lift in the basket with the weight of your items, you, you don't have to worry about it, you know, coming through the floorboard. We've got our sheetrock cut out at our 49 and a quarter by 22 and a half. Now we have to cut the, the drywall out and that's going to be our opening. And again, if there were any lights or anything below, you would probably see the fixture here at the top, but we'd, we wouldn't maybe know that the garage door rail was down there. So that's why measuring is really important. Okay, Chad. We like to use a long blade with, uh, uh, with metal for, that's made for cutting metal. It does a really nice job on the sheetrock. It doesn't tear it up when you're cutting it. And with the long blade, you can lay it right alongside the truss and you're not coming in at an angle. If you had a short blade, you'd be coming in at an angle and it might make the opening, you know, kind of sketchy. Take that up for now. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're going to mount the one of the upper arms. We've already pre-drilled the holes. So you're using these legs. So we're using legs. And uh, do we have washers for those legs? Yep. 
Okay. So we're using a, a lag and a washer. And on, on our arms, <clears throat> we actually have notched holes so that you can make adjustments with the basket. And we'll show you toward the end when we're making our final adjustments where you would need to do that. So we put those up, um, keep them about an eighth of an inch inside the opening and drill your holes in the center of the notched part. And we're gonna go ahead and firm up with our legs. Thank you. All right, and we're gonna do the same with that side. We, it, all it needs, it doesn't need a dedicated circuit. It just needs a, a standard um, 15 amp outlet. We recommend that it's not a GFI outlet. Um, and we like to have it on a switch. So if, uh, if for some reason someone got a hold of the remote and lowered it and you had a nice car down below it the product does have built-in obstacle detection but you don't want it to hit your car and stop and come back up so we recommend having a safety switch or just a switch so that when you're ready to use the lift you turn the switch on then you can use the remote okay Now we make this to where <clears throat> if you were putting this into a truss system and you had a truss leg coming down, if this was part of your truss system and a truss leg was coming down through here, we actually have two sets of holes. The first set of holes is an inch and a half out and that would accommodate this truck le truss leg. And so it's an easy install. Um, some of the other companies that manufacture these you have to buy extra parts to to make that work we just figured we wanted to send everything that you need all at once and you don't have to order anything extra in this case we don't need it so we're going to go all the way in and we'll go ahead and put our bolts in it's real simple you know the other cool thing about our product um, some of the competitors <clears throat> their motor lifts right from the center so if you were lifting a tall box and your motor was up here, that's the extent of what size box, unless you came up here and kind of pulled it off. But we, the, the limitation of what we have now is this ceiling. Obviously a tall box like that, you, you would want to secure it. So now that we have the motor mounted, <clears throat> we're going to drop our lifting cables down below. Of course, make sure you don't drop them on anybody's head. And we're going to loop them over our pulleys. So now we have our opening, we have our cables coming down. We're going to bring our basket over and pretty much center it under the opening. We're right behind you, Matt. And we're going to take the cable and run it down through. There's a hole in this carriage bolt and we want this hole to be vertical. And we're going to run our first cable down through the top of that and pull all the slack through. And we're going to just snug these. We're not going to crush them. We're never going to crush these. They just need to be snugged. But until we get the adjustment on here, we just want to snug them for the time being. When we lift this basket up, we want it to close evenly on all sides. And most garage doors, floors have a, a pitch to them so that the water will drain out. So what we want to do is we want to measure from the top of our bracket of the upper arm. Actually, this side would be better because the slope is going to be over here. down to this bracket and we're exactly 111 inches. So we want to match that on the other side. We're actually exactly 111 inches. 
So no slope where we're sitting. It looks like the slope is more out into the, the car bay area here. So we should be able to snug those up just a tad. Are you, are you snugged on that side, Chad? Okay, we can lift it off the ground to do the legs. The only thing is I think I brought the remote up top. So once you've confirmed that your measurement is the same side to side, you can put the wire through the second bolt. Now this carriage bolt, we want the hole to go horizontal. And we want to start from the front of the basket and push it toward the back of the basket. And pull that in snug. Again, don't crush these. You can easily break the bolt because it is, it does have a hole in it. <clears throat> now we normally leave about a foot of cable on here. We cut off the rest um, and then it, it, we shove it in the hole and kind of it stays inside this frame and we loop it on down. Um, I don't think we need to cut any of this cable off or maybe we do. Yeah, we're gonna have to cut about four inches off, Chad. So now we've, we've mounted our motor and, and our brackets up top. We've assembled our basket. We've connected our basket to our assembly with the cables. Now we want to pair the remote to the motor. So we have three buttons on here. We have up, my, and down. My is to stop, up is to raise, down is to lower. But to pair the motor, we hold these two simultaneously and the motor will jog. And so you can see the cables went slack. Now we're gonna raise the basket off the floor. And we're gonna do a little bit of adjustment on here. So <clears throat> rather than be down on your hands and knees, we can bring it up to kind of workbench level and make our adjustments here. Good. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> We have a lot of adjustment, like I'd mentioned earlier, depending on your, your floor system. We can go from a two by four floor system up to a two by 16 floor system simply by we push in these buttons and lower the legs. And the reason for that is we want the door to close on the ceiling. We also want this to be, this, this floor to be about an eighth to a quarter of an inch above your attic floor so you can slide your boxes on and off without them getting hung up on the floor system. So to determine where we're gonna adjust these, this, this area, the door to the basket floor, is we wanna get a measurement on the, from the attic floor to the, to the bottom of the sheetrock. So what we wanna do is we wanna have six and a half inches from this door, uh, actually wanna have six and three quarters if we want to leave a quarter of an inch at the top. So we're just going to crank these up till they're going to take about an inch out of this. I'm going to go to seven. You're right about there, just a little bit more. Before this is programmed, it doesn't really want to work with you. So sometimes you push a button, it'll go. Sometimes it'll stop. So you have to kind of keep working it. Once it's programmed, it works beautifully but we don't want to program the stops yet. So we're going to see how it fits. Once we pull that paper off of there, it's a much more attractive door than that wooden one. But some people require the fire rated door, so looks good. So if you look at kind of how this basket is sitting in the opening, it's tight there in this corner and it's kind of loose over on that side. What we want to do is move it so that it's centered in order to move. So we'll do our front to back. We have about an inch gap on this side and it's actually touching the truss on this side. So we're going to loosen the bolts on this upper arm.
And remember, they were notched holes, so we should be able to push it over. And let's see if we can get that, let the basket kind of quit swinging and see how centered we are. So for some reason, there's like a, <clears throat> the, from this side to this side, that's the floor's kind of got a dip in it or something. So we're going to, we're going to even drill this over a little bit further. And I'm not going all the way tight. I'm going to take this one out. All right, so back to the, using the slots, we're going to push this, this arm over. And now we have a little more gaps. So we're going to come this way. Okay, so front to back, we have roughly about a half inch on each side. So we're going to go ahead and lock this arm down. It looks like on that side, we're, we're pretty good as well. So we can go ahead and tighten those. If you were putting this into an attic where you were, you had a truss leg coming down or you were up against the knee wall, you can use that as your support. But if it's out in the open like this, <clears throat> basically we're going to use this piece of uh, steel, powder coated steel, and we're going to uh, put one tech screw, we'll do it on this side, uh, tech screw into the frame. And we're going to push it over and then put another tech screw into the bottom part of the arm to, uh, to hold it in place. This little piece of angle is a safety stop and it gets mounted. There's pre-drill holes on the left upper arm and they match up with the holes of the stop. And we basically drill that into place with our tech screws. And when the basket comes up, this assures us that it's not going to come up any higher than, even if our settings change, it's not going to come up, come up, come up any higher than, than this stop. Okay, so there's our stop. Once we have the basket centered, we're going to lower it down so that it's just outside of the opening. And we'll stop it with the my. And we're gonna put these four corners in place. These are guides. These are absolutely necessary. Otherwise the basket could get hung up and not come down or worse yet, get hung up while the cables unroll and then decide to come down all at once on somebody's head. So we're gonna take the four corners <clears throat> and our package of included nails. And what you want to do is you want to, uh, the angled side, you want it to be about an inch above the floor. So we're going to need to cut off. We don't want this to go below the ceiling height. So we're going to need to cut off a little bit and just score it. Okay. So, we can cut them. So we want to make sure we don't extend past the ceiling, but we want about an inch above the top here. So we, we'll cut them to size and we're going to go ahead and put four screws, two on either side, or four nails, two on either side. So we'll do that on all four corners. Okay, so this is our, our safety strip. This is just kind of a visual aid so that when the basket is down that you, you don't let any objects fall over. So what we're going to do is just secure this with a few of our nails. I always like to center the strip from side to side and start somewhere in the center. And just put a few nails. I like to put them in the black spots here so they're not visible. <clears throat> Again, this is a uh, another safety feature. It is a chain, but I would not rely on this to hold a person in place. But we do have little holes to hook this into. And again, it's another visual cue. It's just to say, hey, 
do not go past this point because you don't want to fall down into the attic. And then finally at the top, we have our pulley covers. And we have a left and a right, and there's a sticker inside. That's our left. And you want to mount the pulley cover. Um, if you have a really tall attic, probably best to show you on this one. You can see how the cable starts to wind inward on the roller tube. So you probably want to take your pulley cover um, with, and account for the, the basket being all the way up because we're down about three feet. We're going to get a, another probably three winds on here. So we don't want this thing rubbing against that, that cable. So we're going to bring it out here just to the edge of this opening. And we'll put a tech screw in here and a tech screw in here. And that'll secure our pulley covers. Okay. All right. And we just shove the excess down into the arm for a nice clean install. And then we repeat on the other side. So the first thing you want to do is run the basket all the way up till it's closed. Just let it go by itself and it'll stop. So you want to get it to where the door is just closed. You don't want any pressure on it because the motor has obstacle detection. So if it senses pressure, when it goes to close, it's going to feel something and think there's something in the way and then it's going to open back up about 12 inches. So you get it to where the door is just snug to the ceiling and you use the my and the down arrow and the motor, it'll start to lower and you're going to let it come all the way down to the floor. I got three feet down here. Are we good on the floor there? So we set the upper stop limit with the my and the down. Now we're going to set the lower stop limit. Am I pulling this fish off? So the first thing you want to do is take up the slack in the cables. So, so bump the, the up arrows just so the cables are taut, but not lifting the basket off the floor. And then you use the my and the up button to set the lower stop. As the basket raises, you use the my to stop it. And then you hold the my in until we get a jog. And then the final programming. So you find a nail or a pen and on the back of the remote there's a little blue button. And if you hold that in until the motor jogs, now we're programmed. So now the up is up. My stops it. Down is down. If there's an obstacle in the way, if you forget to leave your car in the way, the basket is going to come down. It's going to sense that and it's going to stop and raise about 12 inches. Just move your item out of the way, bring it down. It'll rest on the floor. If you want to load items from waist level, sometimes it's easier. If you have a pickup truck bed, you don't have to go from the bed down to the floor. Just leave it up. You can load it while it's hanging. Uh, that's really about it. Any questions, Matt? Nope. Remember, I had one before, so I, uh, that's right. I'm well versed. I'm excited. I, I like that metal tray. It's cleaner, yeah. Yeah. We did away with this bungee across the front. These yeah, I, really, I took it off and got rid of it anyway. <laughs> we had two people hang it onto the red safety chain and yeah. try to lower the basket and it's hanging on and it's stretching and it's stretching and the, yeah. so we, we thought, well, let's just not use that. We've got the red safety chain up, up so top. So the last thing yeah. to do is tear the film? We're going to leave it on because we're going to paint. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, he's okay. going to paint. Yep. Really it would be mounting this, but this is real easy now. Yeah, I don't like to mount it. I like to put it in the upper drawer of my cabinet so that Perfect. no one touches it. Gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah, in case there's something in the way. I did the same thing, thing with the stairs. I hid it from everybody else, and they had to call and find out where, and I would move it around, so they have to call and find out where it was. We had a few plants here like that, too. Yeah. 
So the motor pigtail, we have it just kind of draped down and going into the plug. Yeah. Um, you have enough room to scoot around the back side of that. Uh, so I don't know if maybe, I don't know if it makes sense to bring and, and mount that, that outlet to the floor. So, gotcha. And then just kind of zip tie that cable just so, oh. it, so it's neat. Because yeah. when you go around there, then you have to step over the pigtail. Got it. I don't know if you're going to be going around the back side or not. But Yeah, I don't know. We'll clean it up. Sweet. That's it. I like the blue. That's the new color. Yeah. That's the TRD Pro color for mm -hmm. 2022. It's OG blue. 